On this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to fix peeling drywall paper. So stay tuned. Hi friends, welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, consider pressing the subscribe notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. You probably came across this situation where you're walking around your house and you notice that some areas do have some peeling drywall paper, just like what you see right here. I know this is an unpainted wall, but it kind of goes the same way how we're gonna fix this if it was painted as well. So you're probably gonna see these situations probably behind your vanity, you're doing your remodel, and right behind it, there's some unpainted areas. And some of the common ways I myself have done this to myself is when I'm going and masking off the wall, putting some drop, say I'm gonna be doing some renovations or painting, and right when I take off that piece of tape, the whole drywall paper goes with the tape and it tears out and do a tear out just like this. Well, you're probably wondering, how do we fix something like this? Well, you're in luck. On this video, I'm gonna show you easy and right way to fix these paper rips. First thing that you wanna do is you wanna get rid of all these little fuzzies all, all around, or if you even have some cracking paint or peeling paint, that's what you want to get rid of as well. The tool that I really like to use to get this all off and clear it up is my four inch drywall knife. Scrape the wall just like this and it works really well to get all that loose paper cleared up. This is not guaranteed that you're going to get all that paper all cleared and you are going to have some fuzzy edges as well. This is just for if you have big pieces of chipping paint, peeling paint, or just big pieces of paper, just like what you saw that was falling out. So for these little fuzzies right here, the drywall knife might not be able to get to them. So you can probably just get a utility knife. So go trace out where the fuzzies are and just peel it off like this. So friends, sorry to interrupt you right quick, but if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that like button down below. It'll greatly help out the channel. Thank you so much. And don't forget friends, I'm giving away two $50 gift cards every single week to two lucky winners. It's very easy to enter. All you gotta do is be a subscriber, like and comment on any video that I post within this week. And I'll be posting the winners on my community tab on my YouTube channel every single Sunday. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thanks so much friends. Let's get back to the video. So another trick that you can do and just be very, very careful, use cut resistant gloves if you need to, is using these box knife blades, just like this. You're just gonna shave it out just like that. Or you can even do this. You just kinda scrape off the excess. So I'm just gonna create this scenario. Maybe you have this situation where you have where the drywall itself is starting to show right on the inside and you have these major chips right there. So same thing, you're gonna take your drywall knife and just try to smooth it as best as you can. You want to make it so that those loose parts are not there. But here's another trick. Sometimes when you're trying to peel off this paper, you're going to go start peeling and peeling and it's going to keep running and running. And sometimes it could go to like two to three feet of just you peeling paper. You don't want that to happen. So what you're going to do is you're just going to take your utility knife or your box knife, do a clean cut just like that, a little hairline cut. That's all it takes, one hairline cut. Just so that when you start peeling this off, it ends right there. Always have a utility knife and a box knife with you. Again, all the tools that I use within this video, I'll leave the link on the description down below. What I see some people doing is right when they do this, they go ahead and start putting joint compound on this. The reason why you don't wanna do that is because this is very porous and depending on the humidity inside that room or wherever you're at, some of the stains might start coming out, which starts bleeding right through that joint compound. So what you wanna use is this primer right here. Now there's one called Zinther and it's been shellac base, but this should work just as well. If you're interested on this one, I'll leave this one on the link down below for you to check out as well if you need one of these. But this is a primer and it's for all surfaces. Now it blocks tough stains, almost dry on, I won't, count on 30 minutes. I'd probably just leave it to around 40 to an hour more. Before you start using this, make sure that you have a well ventilated area. You have all the windows open or you have some sort of ventilation running. Spray it evenly all throughout, but we're gonna focus also more onto this damaged area right here with the exposed drywall. Now you don't wanna go too crazy on this. You're just gonna, you know, spray it and puff it 
little by little on that little area where there's more damage on this area I'm gonna focus more on that area just like that now you can use a roller to kind of even it out and spread it up I work on my car a lot and I have these shop towels right here and just kind of feather it in like this it works just as if you were using a roller no need to go fancy with a roller and waste that roller just to spread this on I do have some more areas right here that I missed I'm just gonna puff it up one more time. There you go. That should be good. Let's wait one hour. So after 30 to an hour has passed, the area right here should be nice and dry and we're ready for joint compound or what I call hot mud because this right here, Easy Sand 5, dries in approximately five minutes. So you gotta work really fast. It's great for small patch up work like this. And if you're interested on this, I'll also leave this on the link down below. So what I like to do, since we're only gonna be patching a small amount, I like to get a cup and fill it up with a little bit of water. We're gonna take a little bit of the Easy Sand and put some in there till we get a nice consistency of like a yogurt-like type. So once again, right when you add this stuff um, and you start mixing, you got about five minutes. So you gotta work really fast. If you have a drywall pan as well, you can use that. But for small works like this, I think a cup in like this should be okay. So you notice how you can mix this up really, really fast on a paper cup. And easily just dispose of this once you're done. So avoids cleanup. You can actually work like this already. Or you can put this, if you have a pan, you can use that drywall pan or if you have a hawk, like this one right here, we should be fine because we're only gonna be patching a little bit. I'm gonna work out of the cup. Just pour this onto your um, drywall knife like that. Reduces using all that time to clean up your hawk or your pan. And you can just spread it like this. I like to even scrape it off on my cup like this. It's totally up to you. If you think that one coat is good enough and you're, you're ready to go, then you are ready to go sand it, then paint. But for us, we're going to observe this area right quick, especially this area with the crater. And I think that it's going to shrink a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit more after it dries. Wait for that to dry. We'll do a light sanding, and then we'll go apply paint. This area has shrunken, so we're going to apply one more coat on top, then we should be good to sand. Look at all the waste that I've generated. I wish I didn't mix that much, all that wasted items. So if you have any areas around your house that you think needs quick patching, go ahead and reuse whatever's left just to save material. For me, I like to use these sanding blocks. I got a 60, 80, 120 to 220. I'm gonna be using the 120. If you're interested in these sanding blocks, I'll leave this in the link down below as well. So what's great about the sanding block is you can reuse it. I ran it into some hot water and pretty much all that gunk cleared up. And now you can go let this set and dry and we can, you can reuse it once again. There you have it friends. We have it nice and sanded, nice and smooth. It's definitely ready for paint. Now a few things that I want to mention when it comes to painting. Now since this is just a mock-up, I'm not going to go and paint it up. But if it is your finished wall and you're going to go and touch it up with paint, go and make sure that you have the right correct pink match. So just go to your local hardware store and get a pink match, especially Home Depot and Lowe's does that. Even though if it's a pink match, it's not going to completely match up. You're going to see some flashing. You're going to see some different hues on different angles. The reason for that is, is because if you fully painted a wall and you went and repaired it, that old paint is definitely going to lose its sheen. It's going to change. It's going to, it's going to get contaminated with dirt and debris over time. And that's just something you can't mimic when it comes to applying new paint, no matter what type of paint it is, even though it is color matched. So the best way that you can probably do is repaint the whole wall. Or in your case, if you're just gonna touch it up, just try to do your best to feather it out on the edges with the existing paint that you matched it with. You just pretty much have to wait it out and see over time if it will blend in with your old paint. For all my professional painters out there, kindly please comment down below on what you think is the best way to color match. But in my opinion, that is the best way to do it. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you found this video super helpful, please hit that big thumbs up, press the subscribe notification bell, and I'll see you friends on the next video.